I feel like there's something I'm missing here. Did you guys like have a meeting or something before I got here? Hi everyone, Paul Mikalev here from Asperger's From The Inside. I make weekly videos sharing the human side of autism, so make sure you hit subscribe to get the latest content. So I don't know if you can relate to this, but I often feel as though there's some kind of layer of information that everyone else has access to and I just don't quite get. So I'm thinking to myself, how does everyone else know this? Where was I supposed to get this information from? So a common expression to describe this phenomenon is to say that someone missed the memo or memo as some of my colleagues in Seattle used to say. Um, so in this video, I'm going to share a couple of reasons why that is um, and just uh, a little bit of insight into my, like the experience on the inside of, of what it's like to exist in a world where often social information is just on a different wavelength to, to what I can actually access. Um, so the first reason that I, I think sometimes I feel like I've missed the memo is because other people copy each other in a way that I don't necessarily do instinctually. So I remember in preschool, right? I must have been maybe three years old and we were learning a song, right? A song with actions. And the way this works for three-year-olds is they play a song on a recording and all the kids stand there and the teacher sort of does actions and all the kids copy. And I, I have this memory of watching all the other kids with fascination going, wow, they're all doing the same thing. Like, are you getting this? What's going on here? How, how do they know what to do? So I figured out pretty quickly that it was because they were watching the teacher and they were copying. But in that first instance, there was a, there was a brief moment there where I was just completely distracted and in awe of this phenomenon without necessarily being a part of it and knowing what's going on. Ironically, when you don't know what to do in a social situation, it seems as though everyone else knows what to do. It's probably because they are copying each other. If you're in a, in a new situation that you've never been before and you're not sure what to do, copying the people around you is a pretty good first step. I even made a video calling it the golden rule. If you're not sure what to do, copy the people around you. This is a very natural human instinct and when everyone else does it so naturally, it looks to me as if they actually know what to do when really they're just looking around to the people around them and, and copying. So another reason that I might find myself in this position is because my instinct of what I feel like doing or what comes to mind or what, you know, in, in my thought process is often uh, different to the majority of people around me. So it's a little bit like when, um, for example, if, if we asked, you know, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? And everyone said chocolate and I said strawberry, right? There's no inherent reason why I'm different to that. Everyone has different preferences. It's just that if you ask a group of people, there are some types of preferences where a, a large majority will have a, a particular preference or a particular way of thinking. Uh, another good example of this is ask someone, you know, a word association, like what's the first vegetable that comes to mind, right? Rhubarb was probably not up the top of your list. So if everyone else is thinking like carrot and potato, and I'm thinking like rhubarb or, you know, asparagus, then that's, that's going to mean that I see the world and I end up in a different place to everyone else. So like everyone stepped left and I stepped right. And I'm thinking, how did you know to step left? How did everyone know at exactly the same time to do exactly the same thing? And one of the possible answers is it was instinct. They didn't know, they just reacted. And it just so happens that my reaction happened to be different to the majority. And now I'm over here by myself wondering what I missed and everyone else has, has made the same choice. Another assumption um, that people often make that, that can potentially be a cause of this phenomenon is that it's natural to assume that other people are a little bit like you. Other people have the same preferences as me, think like me. This is actually a really important developmental stage for children where they start to develop what we call theory of mind, recognizing that other people are living, thinking, feeling beings just like themselves. And it helps, it helps in social situations to 
uh, getting, you know, step into someone else's shoes and figure out what they're going through so that you can understand their behavior and, and get along a little bit better. So that's all great, except that the first um, way to start learning theory of mind is to assume that other people are like me. Other people think like me. Other people have feelings like me. And if your thoughts and feelings and reactions and preferences are significantly different to your peers, then what that leads to is really bad assumptions. If I assume that everyone else you know, likes hugs when they don't like hugs or likes really loud heavy metal music when actually that turns a lot of people off uh, or other people like to be left alone and without being talked to and they feel really comfortable. Um, you know, if I'm in kindergarten and I'm doing what I think the other kids would like me to do to be friends and that turns out that actually they would like something else, then my first guess is going to be wrong and if it's too far wrong, then it's a bit hard to adjust. And I'm getting images of engineering maths where we're trying to solve um, equations numerically. And you have to make a guess and then you kind of iterate from that guess. And if your guess is way off, then it can be hard to iterate to find a solution. So you need to find a guess. Why am I explaining this in maths terms? No one's going to get this. Actually, a significant number of people are going to get this and they'll love it. And the rest of you might be wondering what I'm talking about. But you have to have a good initial guess for numeric methods to have a high chance of success of converging on a solution. So if my guess is way off, it makes it difficult to have a second impression, right? If people think I'm a little bit weird, but they're happy to keep talking to me, then I get a second chance at a social interaction. Whereas if someone doesn't want to interact with me at all and doesn't give me that second chance, then there's no opportunity for learning. So this is partly where the um, stereotype of the little Aspie anthropologist comes from because sometimes it feels like, especially when you've just realized the fact that, oh, everyone else around me is actually quite different from me. Um, I, can, I can go into kind of um, objective study mode. What are the other people around me doing? What are they thinking? How are they acting? And it's almost like studying them as if they're a different species. Um, a friend of mine actually asked her mother when she was six years old, am I an alien? Not am I adopted? Not do I not fit into this family? Am I an alien? Am I not part of this species? You know, have you, you know, were you abducted? And should I actually belong on a different planet? Um, sometimes they call Asperger's wrong planet syndrome as well. And that's kind of where that sort of concept comes from. If you feel like you're so different from the people around you that it's literally like you've somehow ended up on the wrong planet. Um, so interestingly, um, I just remembered something around the, the golden rule of uh, copying people. So last year I ran a workshop uh, where I ran something called the social analogy game, which is all about learning the benefit and value of copying the people around you and, and making decisions based on what the person next to you is doing. And the whole point of the game, and you can actually see a video of this on, on the A-List Hub resources, I'll include a link to that. Um, the whole point of the game is that you've been given an instruction and the, the catch is if you follow the instruction while your neighbor is not following the instruction, you're gonna bump into each other. So it's actually not only important to follow what you know you're supposed to do, but it's also important to recognize what is the person next to me doing and is, what I, is following the rules gonna cause me to, to bump into them um, or do I have to modify my behavior based on the people around me? So the fourth reason why I feel like sometimes I miss the memo is that there might legitimately be some information that has not landed with me. It's just gone over my head or I wasn't paying attention or I was focused on something else and didn't notice what everyone else noticed. Um, a good example of this, uh, I can remember in, in primary school, I think I must, it must have been prep in, you know, I was five years old in primary school and my teacher wrote that she thinks I have a hearing um, impediment or something like that. Because when there is background noise, 
I would not hear the teacher's instructions. I would not understand. I would, I would be the person. Everyone else would go off and do the thing and I'd be in the middle going, where did everyone go? Why are they all doing something? So I clearly missed the memo on that information. And in hindsight, the reason was because when there is background noise, I'm very easily distracted by something else and I don't necessarily focus on what I'm supposed to be focusing on, in this case, what the teacher is saying to the class. Um, this was actually uh, a very common experience, especially in primary school. I would commonly think at the time, how does everyone know what to do? How does everyone know where to line up at lunchtime? How does everyone know what homework we've got to do? The teacher just mentioned, make sure you get your homework in on Monday. I'm like, what homework? Did you say something about homework? So not only was I sometimes missing the information, but also due to a lack of friends and social network, I didn't have people around me to fill in that gap of information. You can imagine if there's a group of five people, you only really need one or two to hear the instructions and the others can say, oh, sorry, what was that? I wasn't listening. And their friends can sort of fill them in on, on what to do and where to go. Uh, and this is part of the, you know, copying thing that if your friends know what to do, then you can kind of learn from that and know what to do as well. So the fact that especially in primary school, I didn't really have friends that would that would um, do that role for me. It meant that I was literally missing information that other kids were actually getting. So uh, I might leave it there. Um, I don't know if you can relate to this phenomenon of feeling as though there's information that everyone else knows uh, that you haven't figured out where, where they know it from yet. That sort of makes sense. I hope you know what I mean. Um, I would love to hear from you in the comments if you relate to that um, and, and what your experience of that is. Um, otherwise, I will see you next week and I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.